Professor Daum, thank you for doing this interview with us. I wanted to ask, as uh, many of us are psychology students and many think about uh, starting an academic career, uh, the first question would be, what made you uh, decide that you want to stay at the university after the bachelor's or master's? Um, that's a tricky question that um, I probably at that point, I just did not know what else to do. Um, that was one. That, that's probably the honest answer. And the second, a little bit less, but also honest answer is I was so intrigued by the field that I that I studied and um, developmental psychology. I was so fascinated um, that I thought after my then at that uh, time diploma thesis. So this is not this should not be the end. I want to I want to continue in doing research and doing research in developmental psychology, focusing on cognitive development in children. Thank you. And uh, another thing is, the universities are a lot about ideas. What were some of like the ideas that uh, influenced you a lot and that uh, influence your research now? I think one of the biggest influences was that um, psychology, not only developmental psychology, but the field of psychology as a whole, moved more and more towards becoming a natural science or natural science-ish. So if you have very rigorous methods that we use, um, we do um, have the, the, the sample sizes increase, the questions become more and more differentiated, and we use um, methods that can be, that, that are, are, that are uh, adopted um, from natural sciences. Um, so we pay a lot of attention um, to rigorous methodology in order to um, substantiate the interpretations or the, 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 the answers of the questions that we, that we receive. We test these questions, we challenge these questions, we challenge theories, and we try to question everything all the time. Um, and that, that's what makes um, science fascinating for me, and that's what I think um, is the most important thing in science. And um, this generates new ideas, ideas because you get not stuck to this is the one theory and everything works according to this theory, but with every new um, study, with every, every new methods that we develop, um, we have new, new tools um, that we can use to question um, all the science that has been done before. Thank you. And uh, another question, this time more about uh, being at the university and working for the university. And there's a lot of people doing research and not so many professor titles. What are some uh, traits that are more unique to you, yourself that helped you to get to that position? Uh, probably you have to find the field that you're burning for, that you really, you put everything, almost your whole life dedicate to what you're doing, that you really have, um, that, that it's not just a job, but that's more, um, that's more something that really that, that keeps you awake in the night, that um, keeps you motivated, that drives you. Um, a question that you would like to answer, um, a, a, a thing that would, you would like, a question that you would like to, to find the answer and, and to find out how, in my particular um, um, case, the development of children works or the development of humans um, over the entire lifespan works. I think this is, um, this is what drives me. So having this, maybe I call it fire um, in me that uh, does not, is not yet um, kind of, has not calmed down. That's uh, nice to hear. And uh, maybe also what's interesting for our students is when we go to university, we hear uh, or we learn uh, from like one point of time, like the current interpretation of the research field. But uh, you've been in this uh, field for a bit longer than us. So what are some big changes that uh, changed the field? Maybe some influential papers that tore down uh, things that were set in stone previously. Maybe I would not like to refer to one particular um, uh, topic or paper. It is more this kind of 
this this non non stopping change, this ongoing change um, in science, um, which is very much um, why, why I like developmental psychology because humans change um, across the lifespan, across the entire lifespan, they develop, um, and this is how science proceeds. And I. I recall a sentence that the colleague um, from anthropology here at the university said, and he probably has picked it up some from somewhere else, um, that in the lecture, when I start my lectures, I often say, what, I, what we are learning here, what we are talking about here, in 10 or 20 years, maybe we have been proven 50% of these topics, of this stuff, what I'm talking about today, has been proven wrong. And uh, the the, 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 the problem why we're still talking about this today that is that we do not know which 50%. Yeah, we do not know what is going to be wrong in 20 years. So that's the current status. And, but as I said before, you have to question this current status all the time. And I think what helps is the steady improvement of methodology, the steady um, improvement of the tools that we have um, available in order to look at the development, look at how the body, the brain, and the mind works in humans, um, and that this gives us um, a non, an, an everlasting kind of new set of ideas and how to how to improve what we're what we're focusing on. Thank you. That's a nice big picture. Um, also, something I wondered about, like if you're interested in football or something often there's like one game or something that gets played and then like the whole dynamic of the league changes uh did you have that experience of like you read a certain paper or you discovered a new researcher or maybe an old scientist that uh, was like wow i found now like the new thing that was very much when i when we came um from leipzig moved back to zurich and discovered this um, field of bilingualism that we do not sp just speak one language but we have multiple languages that are being spoken and the idea of that language shapes cognition we had this idea for a quite quite a long time but that different languages shape cognition in a different way and that maybe within po one person different languages cause different aspects that occur in one or the other or in both um, languages. That was, that was very much um, a discovery of a new field for me, for me personally, and for the research group. Um, and I think that was, was not a game changer in the sense of, um, of, of that's what um, changes my life, but it was um, opening up an, um, a set of new ideas that we um, are now pursuing and that we are now trying to um, answer. Thank you. And uh, last question, what would be your advice to people that want to become researchers? Never stop asking questions and always try to find answers and never stop um, or never do be satisfied what you have found but always try to question immediately the answer that you found. You have results, make an interpretation, be happy about a published study, then move on and say, okay, is this really what it is? Or could it be, um, could it be different? How can we improve our research? Kind of move on, develop, um, and do not stop um, being curious. Thank you a lot and thank you attending the Congress. And thank you very much. Enjoy lunch. Yeah.